Hey everyone and welcome back to round two of the all-time great 50 over cricket captain series. Today's game see Australia taking on New Zealand, the Netherlands taking on Oman, UA taking on Sri Lanka, Scotland versus Zimbabwe, England versus the West Indies, Pakistan versus India, that'll be probably one of the highlights of the episode, Bangladesh, South Africa and Ireland, Afghanistan. Hopefully you guys look forward to round two of the all-time greats series. Okay, the first game of round two. Let's get straight into it, shall we? We have named the Australian team. We're just going to rotate through the all-time greats round, so the batting order does look a wee bit different for Australia in this game compared to their first game. Uh, David Warner opening up with uh, Adam Gilchrist, two very destructive left-hand batsmen. Got Shane Watson getting a bit of a game now. Shane Watson will bowl some very useful um, overs in the middle, and he's got a decent average as well. He's a very good one-day cricketer for Australia in his time. He's... 33.50s and 900s, and yeah, just a tidy enough um, average of the ball. Ricky Ponting dropping to four in this game, and captain uh, Michael Hussey and Michael Bevan, two outstanding cricketers at five at six. Uh, Andrew Simons, pretty much to bowl a bit of medium, bit of off spin, uh, very useful number seven. Got Mitchell Stark, uh, pretty much he'll open the bowling with Glenn McRae. Shane Warne will go to nine. Craig McDermott uh, pretty much will get a game uh, this time, and Glenn McGraw will make up the Australian side. So the conditions are pretty good for batting, and it's Australia's home ground, so Australia a heavy favourite to win. Uh, let's go to the New Zealand team. New Zealand have a pretty familiar lineup um, from last game. We've got Martin Guptill Nasta opening, Williams, Williamson, Crow, and Taylor, 3, 4, and 5, a formidable uh, pair with Williamson being the captain. Brendan McCullum um, playing a role at six uh, as a finisher. Chris Cairns, similar role. Very good all rounder, Chris Cairns, along with Richard Hadley. Uh, Hadley, incredible statistics uh, there. Uh, Daniel Vittori with um, some slow left arm, just give a bit of variation in the attack. We've got Shane Bond, and we're giving Ewan Chadfield a game. Now, Ewan Chadfield, very underrated cricketer, was a sort of a miserly bowler while Hadley took the wickets at the other end, but he has a good career here. Uh, and he deserves a top, uh, spot in the all-time great series. So let's, without further ado, go to the result. So a very highly competitive game, but it sees Australia beat New Zealand by three wickets. So we will go to the New Zealand scorecard uh, with Ross Taylor bringing up 130 off 117, 17 fours and a six. Uh, he didn't have too much support. Like, the next highest score was Dan Vittori, 34 of 21, three fours and two sixes, and uh, Kane Williamson got a wee bit of a start there. The Australian bowlers did a pretty tidy job with the ball. Glenn McGrath, 2 for 41. McDermott, 1 for 38. Warren, 1 for 53. Simon's a wee bit expensive, 2 for 74. Michael Hussey got an over, uh, 2, 1 for 6. And they were chase, uh, pretty much 2, 68 for 7. Very close game. Chain Watson with 54 of 84, 6 fours and a 6. Got Michael Bevan, 65 of 66. The man um, is a brilliant... Um, guy to have in the second innings. Simons with a good cameo, 46 uh, of 28. Um, may have been the main difference in the game. Stark, 23 of 24, and Shane Warne, 16 not out at the end. So for the New Zealand bowlers, Shane um, Bond, 2 for 53. Hadley, wee bit Spencer, 2 for 65. Vittori, 1 for 39. Ewan Chatfield, 1 for 63. And Ken's 1 for 48. Our next game in the series is the Netherlands versus Oman. Netherlands causing that big boil over beating the all-time great Sri Lankan side, looking to continue their momentum against Oman. Oman, obviously, with um, only a recent history in um, one-day cricket. So you'd think the Netherlands win this, but we'll go to the teams. Rightio, let's go to the Netherlands team, shall we? So Baz Zuderin, um coming off that special 100. Uh, we'll open up with Myberg. Myberg had an impact um, in one of the World Cups the Netherlands featured in. Uh, it was a 20-over format, but looking to him to get an aggressive start there. Uh, Alexei Kavarese. Uh at three. Ryan Tendiscada at four. And captain Tom Cooper at five. Pretty solid four and five, you'd think. Resley Berezi at six. Roloff uh, van der Merwe, uh, at 7 with Michael Ripon at 8. Peter Boren at 9 will get a game this time. He can bowl a few medium paces. Bukhari and Jonkman make up their lineup. So Oman looking to bounce back after their defeat. Um, have got Maskud at 1, Singh at 2, Elias at 3, Ali at 4, Nadim, Gould, Kumar, Nawaz, Singh, Odiri and Khan make up their lineup. 
So, like I said, we'll just go over the match and just see how the um, game pans out. So, a pretty decent game of cricket again. The Netherlands um, getting home by five wickets. Oman batted first, getting 230 for nine with Masood. Uh, 123 of 139. Anchored the innings, 16 fours and a six. Had a wee bit of support from Kumar and uh, Singh. For the uh, Netherlands, uh, Rippon, 3 for 45. Rolla van der Merwe, 2 for 59. Jonkman, 2 for 42. And Bakari, 2 for 39. Partnerships here. We didn't show that in the other game. I probably should have for the partnerships. But key partnerships in the middle. Um, and the 6th and 8th wicket partnership effectively got them to a below par score, you'd say. So the Netherlands, uh, Bazudere, kept his good form up. 48 off 89. Four boundaries in his innings. Crevazi, 66 off 80. Ryan Tenderskar to 53. They obviously put together a key partnership. Roll off Van der Merwe, 36 off 33. Five fours and a six guided the team home. Khan, 2 for 51. 2 for 8 for um, Elias. And Nadim, 1 for 50 there. But the key the key partnership, um, Zuderin and Cavazzi put on 114. Tenderskar and Berezi, uh 37. And Tenderskar and Roll off Van der Merwe guided the team home. So good one for the Netherlands again. They are two for two in the all-time greats series. Crucial game coming up for Sri Lanka. Uh, they um, bottled a, a game against the Netherlands. Need to bounce back here. Taking on the United Arab Emirates, a game they are expected to win. But let's look over the United Arab Emirates team who are at home. And will be playing on um, a spinner's pitch because they are known to turn in uh, Dubai. Um, where the United Arab Emirates are. So pretty much the team will be slightly altered from this. So we'll be right back. Okay, so this will be an interesting game. Um, Anwar and Ali opening up. Um, Usman at three. A few changes to the UA team. Uh, Karam Khan, one of their more um, known players. Fairly good average of 41.57. He will bat at four and maybe bowl a little bit of spin because of the surface. We've got Mufti and Swampnall Patel at uh, 5 and 6. Rohan uh, Mustafa at 7. Muhammad Naveed at 8. Helder at 9. Raza at 10. And Khan at 11, making up their lineup. Obviously, um, Sri Lanka's team will be quite interesting, and that's coming up. Sri Lanka in this game have made a few changes to their team. We've got Jasari and Dulshan opening up the... Um, Batting, uh, pretty much captain and keeper Kumar Sangakara at three, and Mahela J. Warner performing that solid three four. Arabinda De Silva at five, can bowl a bit of off spin as well. Angelo Matthews at six. Rangatonga makes the team, uh, just to strengthen up the batting a wee bit. We've got Chaminda Vas at eight, we've got uh, Mendes at nine, Malinga at ten, and Moralithran at eleven. So a few uh, spinners in the lineup that they can um, exploit on this uh spinning track uh so it'd be very interesting to see how this game pans out let's get to the result shall we so sri lanka sneak home it was not an easy game for the sri lankans but they have picked up a win um uae have been a tough opposition for their first two um opponents they batted first they posted 261 with anwar 54 of 47 karam khan uh 78 of 89 but it just fell away a little bit when they were in a reasonable position but they got to 261, didn't bat the overs out. Uh, for the UAE, uh, uh, they had some decent partnerships as well. They had a 74 run stand for the second wicket. Uh, the fifth wicket had a 96 run stand. And just over by over, they didn't really launch their entire innings. They had a few decent overs, but not really um, building up there. For the Sri Lankans, uh, Lasith Malinga, 3 for 61. Moralithran, 1 for 44. 2 for 45 for Vas was economical. Mendes, 1 for 49. Arabinda de Silva, the surprise packet of the day, 3 for 51. So a good performance there for Sri Lanka in the run chase. Tulakaratni Dulshan, 96 of 96. 16 boundaries and hittings. But they're a um, wee bit of trouble. Uh, Sangakara, 32 of 48. We had Rungatonga, 35 of 39. Mendes with an unlikely 46 of 48 because they were 183 for 7. It looked like um, the United Arab Emirates were going to cause another boil. We're going to look at the Sri Lankan team. We're going to make some alterations, I think, because 
They're just not quite performing the way I want them to. But anyway, Raza, 3 for 61, 2 for 62 for Khan. Kept them team in the game. They were um, playing a good brand of cricket. So the key part was Rangatonga and Mender, 79, got the team out of Do Dicey Waters. And Sri Lanka have picked up their first win of the campaign. Rightio, the next match of round two is Scotland taking on Zimbabwe. Well, what will be an interesting game? Zimbabwe coming off a good win against the United Arab Emirates. Scotland losing to the West Indies. But uh, Scotland at home here, they will have a ground where it favours the Seamers. So let's go to the Scotland team, shall we? So this team will change. We'll be right back. So the Scotland team is a highly competitive one, as we saw in the game against the West Indies. Uh, Kyle Quitsier opening up with uh, Matt Cross. Uh, Callum McLeod at three. Uh, Matt uh, Machan at uh, four. Gavin Hamilton at five. Ryan Watson gets a game today at six. Preston Momsen at seven. Majid Huck at eight. Joshua Davy at nine. John Blaine, um, handy um, bowler to have in the lineup at ten. And Sharif will make up the unit. So looking for a few overs from Hamilton, obviously, as he's... He has a wee bit of a knack of taking wickets at um, level for Durham um, over the career he had. But a pretty solid team uh, looking for an opening win in this all-time great series. So next up is the Zimbabwe lineup. We'll be back with that lineup. So Zimbabwe uh, have got a really solid team actually still. Uh, Campbell and Flair opening up the batting today. We've got um, Andy Flair at three, Brendan Taylor at four. Williams and Raz are uh, in the middle order are going to be quite useful. And they can bowl a bit of spin as well. So they've got plenty of options at their disposal for bowling, along with uh, Grant uh, Flair with 104 wickets in his career. Tatenda Tabu getting a game at 7. He's the keeper today. He's streak at 8. Creamer at 9. Ray Price in the team today and Chitara. So the conditions do favour a bit of seam bowling. Um, they do have a few spin options in Barbwe be interesting to see how they go in today's game so well, without further ado let's get to the result in a thrilling low scoring game here at uh scotland zimbabwe win a thriller by one wicket so incredibly tight game 181 for nine scotland posted in this low scoring game callum mcleod 56 off 90 just no one really got going for the side at all like a lot of deliveries chewed up and uh, Majid Huck, 39-53, got Scotland to something relatively competitive. So Chitara, 4-44, was outstanding, 2-45 for for streak, but it was the spins um, of uh, Zimbabwe. Raza, 1-26, for Creamer, 1-30, for Price, 1-27. for Really economical, very hard to get away, so well bowled to um, Zimbabwe there. Partnerships throughout the innings, nothing substantial except for the ninth wicket partnership, which got Scotland to a competitive score. As you can see, the over by over, there was not really too many big overs. There was a lot of uh, maidens throughout the innings. One, two, three, four, five, six maidens. Because it was pretty tough going for the Scots. Zimbabwe didn't make it um, easy themselves. They were three for 15 at one stage. And all sorts of bother. Uh, we had uh, Williams, 30 out of 33, counter-attacking. Totenda Tabu, 36 of 74. And Streak, 58 of 78, uh, guiding the team home in what was a thrilling game of cricket. Uh, Hamilton, 3 for 35, 3 for 38 for Davey, 2 for 31 for Blaine. Uh, yeah, just the key partnerships uh, above the innings. Uh, 60 to Tenda Tabu and Streak. Streak, 31 with Ray Price. And that ultimately got them over the line in what was a great game of cricket. Low scoring game, but um, well done to Barbie for going 2-2 two and two in the competition. Radio, continue on round two, guys. England taking on the West Indies. This is going to be a really interesting game at home. So, so be um, a sort of a batsman sort of pitch uh, there for the England side to negate the West Indies' uh, fiery pace attack. But England have made a few changes to their team. Without further ado, uh, we will change the team and let you guys know who's in that team. So, yeah, a really different team to the one that England played last game. Uh, Bearstow and Gooch um, opening up the uh, batting. Uh, then we've got Joe Root and Kevin Peterson going to a role at four where he's more accustomed to. Uh, one thing England do have is a lot of aggressive batsmen. Uh, Jonathan Trott will get a game here, batting at five. Um, incredible average, Jonathan Trott, 51.25. 
got uh, Alan Lamb, uh, pretty much a good, um, solid uh, middle order batsman for England. Got um, Andrew Flintoff at seven, Swan at eight. We've got Goff, Andy Caddick getting a bit of a game here, and Jimmy Anderson making up the lineup today for England. Next up is the West Indies lineup, which you guys will see shortly. Bit of rotation for the West Indies for this game against England. It's going to be a tough game. Gordon Greenwich uh, and Desmond Haynes um, opening up the batting. Pretty much then we've got Chris Gale at three, Brian Lara at four, Viv Richards at five. Uh, we've got Hooper at six. We've got Canhai at seven. Now, seven games may not consider him an all-time great, but his record in Test cricket was really good. And he is playing one day cricket towards the back end of his career. So it, it was when it was first introduced. I think he'll be a fine fit for the um Yeah, a really fine fit for the West Indies at seven at um with the gloves. Got Malcolm Marshall, Joe Joel Gardner, Michael Holden, and Ambrose. What a bowling attack that is. One as mentioned, one of the best bowling attacks in the competition. Let's see who will get the result, guys, on this um very interesting game between England and the West Indies. And the West Indies win a one-wicket thriller as well. A very good competitive game of cricket. We've had some good games in this round so far. England batting first, getting 286 for 9. Gooch with 111 off 118, 16 boundaries. Joe Root with a solid 65. Lamb with 32 off 24. And Bairstow 49 off 50. But everyone else sort of struggled um, to get anything going. And it was a good effort from the West Indies bowlers. 3 for 61 for Marshall, 3 for 51 for Holding, 2 for 53 for Ambrose, and 1 for 47 for Gardner. With Hooper getting through surprisingly 10 overs, none for 74. I thought they would have tried Chris Gale or something at that point. Partnerships, the, the second wicket was the key one. They were 222 for 2 England. They should have really kicked on and got something huge. It was just nothing after the top two partnerships. As you can see the over by over and the wickets just tumbled in the last 10. The launching pad was set and then it just um, didn't take off uh, there. So we've got the West Indies in response. Get chasing it. 290 for 9. Gordon Greenwich, 100 off 109. Um, brilliant stuff. Combined well with Haynes at the top. Um, can High, 37 off 29. And currently Ambrose, of all people, 24 off 9 deliveries. Uh, he currently was not known as a batsman in his time. Uh, he, he is um, a genuine bunny. Um, Holding and Gardner, like they were in all sorts of strife at 211 for 7, but these three here stuck around um, in the partnerships with um, Canhai and they got home. Remarkably, the West Indies in a thrilling game of cricket for the England side. Caddick 3 for 75, 2 for 75 for Flintoff. Very, very expensive days at the office for them too. Swan 2 for 44 and Anderson 2 for 48. So we've had some really good games of cricket. West Indies do win this away from home. This game will have a lot of people interested. Pakistan versus India, the, one of the great rivalries of world cricket. This has been played in Pakistan. So the Pakistan ground um, offers a wee bit. It'll be, it'll be a random pitch. We just don't know what Pakistan will turn up with on the day. They've got some quality um, players. So do India. Uh, this is going to be one of the games of the round. As spoken about in the start of the episode, you'd probably think um, India had the slight batting edge, but Pakistan um, definitely have um, some good bowlers and probably have the slight edge there. So it's a pretty even game. Without further ado, let's get to the teams. We've got a very good Pakistan side uh, for today's game. We've got Muhammad Afiz and uh, Saeed Anwar um, opening up the um, batting today. Um, Muhammad Afiz, of course, will offer that little bit with the ball. And he had a good game last game, Muhammad Afiz. Uh, Baba Azam at three. Javad Mendad, the Pakistan great, at four. Uh, Inzamam al Haq, another all time great. Uh, very respectful numbers, closing in on a 40 average there. Muhammad Yusuf getting a game, uh, average of 41.72. Got the inspirational Imran Khan, a World Cup winner, and very good batting and bowling averages. He adds a lot to the lineup. And we've got Abdul uh, Razak making his first appearance of the competition. Another all-rounder with um, amazing ability to get a bit with the bat, a bit of value with the ball. The lethal pairing of Wazim Akram and Waka Yunus. Just incredible experience of reverse swing bowling, and they'd be looking to doing that today. And we've got Saeed um, Ajmal uh, pretty much getting an opportunity here. Pretty good um, mystery spinner. 
for Pakistan there. So they've got plenty of bowling and they will be pretty hard to beat at home. But India have got a really good team as well. Let's get to their team. India are pretty stacked as well. Really good team. We're giving Varinda Sewag a game. The explosive um, all-rounder. Um, strike rate of over 104 of his career. Over 251 matches. And can bowl a little bit as well. Uh, Rohit Sharma, uh, of course, has got the highest Monday uh, score of all time. Batting at, um, uh, with Sewag. Uh, we've got Virat Kohli at three with Sachin Tendulkar at four. Probably the two best uh, one-day batsmen that have been before us. So we've got Yuvraj Singh at five. Uh, Yuvraj Singh is a fan favourite. Of course, we'll get Yuvraj in the team for you guys. He averages 36.56 and 111 wickets at 38.68. Mahindra Singh Dhoni at six. We've got um, Jadeja at seven. Zahir Khan, Kumble, Srinath, and Shami make up the, their uh, bowling lineup. Pretty good bowling lineup. Wow. Who do you think is going to win this, guys? India or Pakistan? Let's see the result, shall we? And it's Pakistan winning by 122 runs. So a great all round performance from Pakistan as uh, they posted 284 for seven. And that was solid work from Baba Azam and Javed Miendad. Uh, Ismam Al Haq, Yusuf Khan putting together some useful cameos. But yeah, solid partnership work of 125 from Baba Azam and Javed Miendad. And yeah, just good partnerships throughout the innings and some good scores there. For India, it was a tidy enough bowling performance uh, with uh, the top four doing good. It was just a danger wee bit expensive there, like Khan and Kumble two wickets apiece were the highlights of the innings. And India crumbled. Uh, it was an incredible bowling performance from the Pakistan side. Uh, Sewag and Sharma started off beautifully, 79 for the uh, first wickets. Uh, with Sewag, 43 off 40, five boundaries, Sharma, 37 off 49. But Kohli with a golden duck, uh, Waka Yunus having a magnificent spell of bowling. Uh, Singh gone for 36 was the next top score with Arjmal picking him up. But 4 for 21 for Yunus and 4 for 16 for Syed Arjmal, 2 for 49 for Akram. And Pakistan will pick up the win at home against uh, India and a key result for Pakistan. Our next encounter sees Bangladesh taking on South Africa. And both got very interesting teams. Like, it's going to be um, a game where Bangladesh may fancy themselves with um, it being a spinning track, obviously, in their home conditions. Let's get to their team, shall we? So we've got um, Iqbal, Saka, and Nafiz, Rahim, and Rulkays. Shakib at six. He'll probably bat a little bit higher, actually. He'll bat four. Uh, Mama Dula at seven. We've got Mutaza, Ramat. Rahman opening up the uh, bowling. Muhammad Rafiq and Abdul uh, Razak, two economical spinners. I got spinners at their disposal here, and this will be a really interesting game uh, for Bangladesh. The South African side has made a few changes, giving a few other greats a bit of an opportunity. Hashim Amlo with Graham Smith opening up the batting. Jack Callis at three. Uh, A.B. De Villiers at 4, Faf Dupassi at 5, Quinton de Kock at 6, Lance Klusner at 7, Sean Polk at 8. 7 and 8 for South Africa, probably the best 7 and 8 in the comp. Uh, Imran Tahir at 9, uh, we've got Alan Donald and uh, Makaya and Tini getting a game uh, this time around. So a few spin options uh, for Bangladesh. they would be interesting to see how South Africa stack up in this game. And a very high-scoring game it was. South Africa do end up picking up the victory. 3.24 for 9. Bangladesh posted uh, here with um, the opening run stand of 140. And then the next um, was 105. So some good partnerships here. Uh, so Iqbal, 64 of 77. 7 boards and a 6. The mainstay of the innings. Saka, 131 of 135. Nafiz, uh, 57 of 43. Sakiba Al-Hassan, 34 of 20. And Mutaza towards the back end, 24 of 15. Lance Klusner was super expensive, but he picked up four wickets. Four for 44, three for 67 for Tahir. Tough day for the um, bowlers here in, um, for South Africa. Uh, partnerships, as mentioned, were pretty solid throughout. So the, the wickets sort of tumbled when the launching pad was set up again for Bangladesh. They could have scored a, quite a few more. Ended up being costly for them. 
with the um, 100 from the Bangladesh opener. Trump by Graham Smith, 140 off 136, 18 fours, two sixes. And last 76 off 74, they were really good at the top. 147 runs stand there. And then it was just cameos for maybe De Villiers, 47 off 32, six fours and a six. Faf du C was um, really good as well, 33 off 18. Shakib al Hassan, three for 53, and just a tough day at the office for old Muhammad Rafiq. None for 57 off his uh, 5.4 overs. And um, South Africa pick up um, a valuable victory on the road. The final game of the round sees Ireland taking on Afghanistan. This will be a really good game. These two have had a rivalry for the last 15, 20 years uh, with Ireland um, having the early dominance. But Afghanistan in recent times been a wee bit um, better than Ireland with a bit more consistency, a bit more quality players. Ireland will provide a seamless pitch for the Afghanistan uh, batsmen. Without further ado, let's get to the teams. So we have the Irish team, probably the greatest player um, in, at um, opening, Ed Joyce. Uh, pretty much Ed Joyce's career. We'll highlight him a bit today. Had a fantastic career for Sussex. Look at that career. 92 50s, 47 um, hundreds, 62 hundreds and 18. Uh, 62 50s and 18 hundreds for Ed Joyce in the one day game. A very respectful career for Ireland too. He played a little bit for England too. He did get, I believe, a century for England and also a century for Ireland. One of the very unique players to do that. But um, Ed Joyce, someone we highlight today. Paul Sterling uh, will open up with um, him. Paul Sterling still has a bit of a career to go in real life. He's putting up some really respectful numbers. Can bowl a few tidy overs of offspin as well. Balboni at three. William Porterfield at four. So we've got a few accumulators in that order. We've got Nala O'Brien at five. Uh, Kevin O'Brien at six. Who remembers Kevin O'Brien's um, world's fastest 50 2011 World Cup? Incredible um, batsman over the years for Ireland. Great servant for them. 29.66 with the bat and 32.69 with the ball. Uh, John Mooney, uh, pretty much just a feisty, good bat little cricketer. Uh, 23.49 with the bat, 34.06 with the ball. Uh, we've got Kusak. Um, he will not be opening up the uh, bowling. It'll be um, Boyd Rankin and uh, Johnston. Uh, no, we'll go Murata there for um, them. But anyhow, going back to Kusak, another sort of guy that just bowled in the middle stage, has bowled well, and he can contribute a little bit with the bat. Trent Johnston um, instilled um, some really good um, values in the Ireland team. He, he was an incredible competitor from Australia, um, adopted Irishman. Uh, yeah, just a handyman to have in the team. Uh, Tim Murata and Boyd Rankin, as mentioned, opening up the bowling. Conditions, just to let you know, are favouring the seam bowlers. It is overcast in this particular game. Ireland's opponents are Afghanistan, who've got a relatively competitive team. I've got the youngster in Garbaz, uh, pretty much with an impressive strike rate of 110.4 with uh, Mohammad Shazad. Mohammad Shazad's played a lot of cricket now for Afghanistan. A very explosive opener. Uh, 1450s and 600s. and Pretty mo um, pretty nice numbers, if you ask me. And, and, and very, very talented. We've got Shah at 3, Shahidi at 4, Zetarin at 5. A, a relatively solid pair with a lot of experience. Got some really good all-rounders in this team. Uh, Shinmari in the team, uh, averaging 29.21 with the bats. And he bowls very economically, um, under five runs per over for his 46 wickets, an average of 37.61. I would say uh, Muhammad Nabi's well-traveled uh, around the world, very experienced, uh, 27.62 average there, and um, looking to take a few wickets with the ball, averaging 33.15, very good economy rate. And we've got Rashid Khan, probably Afghanistan's finest cricketer. Um, he's going to rack up the stats, this man. He could probably play a 1,000 T20s in his career by the time he retires. Only 23 years of age. If he plays enough, he, he could rack up some enormous numbers. But anyhow, Rashid Khan's average is 20.57 with the bat. Very good strike rate, too. He can bat. Uh, I've seen him bat in the Big Bash, and uh, on occasion for um, Afghanistan. 140 wickets at 18.58. Uh, there, Mujib Ur Rahman uh, in the team as well, just for um, some other spin options. i got four quality spin options there. Um, we've gone for Dal Latzai, 
in the team today with Hamid Hassan. Now, this guy retired very early. I believe he turned up playing for Germany, of all teams. But he is uh, got really good statistics and a very small sample. But I'm going to give him a go today. He is uh, a player that I do remember um, growing up. But that is the team uh, today for Ireland Afghanistan. Let's see the result. And it was a pretty competitive game. Uh, Ireland picking up the win here by 40 runs. And 240 for 8 Ireland. Ed Joyce anchoring ship. 61 of 112 at the top. But they had a wee bit of a collapse. Sterling, Balboni, Porterfield and O'Brien didn't really get too many scores. It was the toughness of that order. Kevin O'Brien, 57 off 75. Very un-Kevin like. But he anchored the innings with uh, John Mooney. 47 off 36. Kusak and Johnston and Murata just chipping in towards the end there. Pretty tidy enough uh, day at the office for uh, the Afghanistan bowlers, you'd think. Uh, Dalatzai, uh, 1 for 36. 2 for 38 for Rashid Khan, 2 for 55 for Rahman, and 1 for 51 for uh, Muhammad Nabi. Partnerships for Ireland, the, the fifth wicket stand, 82, and the couple of 30 run um, stands got them over a handy score. But as you can see, a, a consolidation period was needed after the early loss of the wickets, and they got through to a decent score in the end. So, Afghanistan, 200 all out. So, a good day at the office for John Mooney, along with his um, handy runs with the bat. He got 3 for 28 with the ball, ranking 3 for 41. Uh, Zetterin, 74 of 87, 11 boundaries, but just... Similar position to Ireland when they were four down for not many. They just couldn't um, kick on, unfortunately, and get the result. So in Ireland's home conditions here, they have picked up a valuable win over their rivals over the years. So guys, that brings a wrap to round two. We will go over the standings of this magnificent competition. So we do have Australia... The West Indies, Zimbabwe, Ireland, Netherlands, Pakistan, unbeaten. Who would have thought the Netherlands would have been unbeaten after two rounds with um, the win over Sri Lanka? So they were having a magnificent wee tournament. Uh, so, yeah, there's some good names there. Um, the teams with uh, one win and one loss, New Zealand, South Africa, India, and Sri Lanka. Uh, the teams with not a win to their name yet, but do expect some of these sides to pick up some wins. Oman, the UAE, Scotland, England, Bangladesh, and Afghanistan. Other teams are there, but yeah, exciting cricket in today's game. A lot of really good games, but um, smash the like button, share with a friend, and we'll see you next time.